Good evening once again. This is Matthew from Prophetic Tongue here to give you another book recommendation. Um, this book um, came to my mind a few times yesterday, actually, so I'm deciding to do it. Um, see how the Lord uses it. Um, but this book is called Birthright by Timothy Alberino. And a little bit about him on the back, it states... Known as a modern-day Indiana Jones, Timothy Alberino is a writer, explorer, and filmmaker whose inquisitive mind and intrepid spirit have led him all over the world on investigative expeditions. His appetite for adventure was manifest at the age of 18 when he dropped out of high school and moved to the Amazon jungle in Peru. Although he does not have letters in front of his name, Alberino is an accomplished autodidactic and scholarly researcher who writes with academic flair. After years of rigorous study, he has garnered an expansive knowledge base that enables him to dissertate with authority on a wide variety of topics. And then uh, above that, uh, the description goes into um, kind of what the book is about. Uh, the earth and distant extraterrestrial worlds are reeling in the wake of war and ruin. A powerful insubordinate prince, personified as the dragon, the devil, and the Satan, has mounted an unsuccessful insurrection against the kingdom of heaven in a battle of unimaginable destruction. The planets in our solar system, once teeming with life, have been laid waste and left to careen in their orbits, tohu va bahu, desolate and empty. After untold eons of inundated oblivion, the time has finally come to restore the terrestrial realm and appoint a new region to govern it, Adam, the first man. This is the preamble of the story of mankind. The offspring of Adam have forgotten the patrimony and purpose of their race. Now faced with extinction at the hands of an alien adversary, it is high time for them to remember. In this revolutionary book, Timothy Alberino retraces the pages and reveals the secrets of the greatest story ever told, the one in which we are all inescapably embroiled. From the galactic rebellion in the pre-Adamic past to the creation of mankind on planet Earth, the fall of the Watchers in the pre-flood world to the machinations of Luciferian forces in modern times. The unveiling of the alien presence to the final battle at Armageddon. Alberino unpacks the synchronicity syn syn of these events with scholarly precision and leaves you breathless on the brink of a post-human apocalypse. So the whole title of it is Birthright, the Coming Post-Human Apocalypse and the Usurption, Usurption of Adam's Dominion on Planet Earth. So this is the book that I recommend. Um, do you need to read it? No, not really. But uh, if you want more of the puzzle pieces of why we're he why we are here, the reason why we are here uh, in a biblical um, narrative, uh, this is a great book to pick up. And then I'll just read um, little passage passages on page 154 in the book, just to give you a little bit more of an insight of um, this book. So page 154. According to occult tradition, the satanic priesthood began with Cain, who worshipped the dragon instead of Yahweh, and was rewarded with secret knowledge for his devotion. This is the origin of the Luciferian doctrine, which teaches that Yahweh is a tyrant and the enemy of man who made him a slave and kept him bound in the chains of ignorance. But the serpent was a friend of man, who illuminated the darkness of his mind and freed him from the thraldom of Eden. The dragon priests of Cain would become willing vessels through whom the powers of the insurgency could influence the affairs of the world. They have successfully altered the course of history and are still operating in the shadows of today. The pieces on the board were thus positioned. On the one side, the watchers, who desired the daughters of men. On the other, the sons of Cain, who desired forbidden knowledge. All the devil had to do was bring them together without being imp implicated in their crimes. The Game of Thrones, the reader will recall, has rules. Satan was authorized to attempt, but nothing else. He knew that the transgression of the Watchers would incur swift and terrible retribution, and, like the cunning snake that he is, was careful to keep his own hands clean to avoid their judgment. If the dragon and his princes had engaged in the sexual trespass of the Watchers, they would have certainly been condemned with them. I believe that the dragon princes will eventually impregnate human women with their own seed, but not until the final hour, when they know their time is short and their fate nearly sealed. 
In the end, all parties involved obtained their prize. The sons of Cain were imparted with the secrets they were striving to learn. The watchers wedded the women they desired, and the dragon reveled in the corruption wrought through their transgression. Not all men had become enamored of the extraterrestrial interlopers. While the watchers were revealing secrets to the sons of Cain and co copulating with the daughters, Enoch was instructing the sons of Seth in righteousness and admonishing them to obey God. It is of interest to note that the name Enoch means initiated or initiating. Initiations are often associated with secret societies and occult fraternities. An applicant seeking entry into a mystery school such as Free Masonic Lodge must be initiated with an oath that includes the impartation of secret knowledge before he is considered a member. Fundamentally, all mystery schools are derived from the illumination of the dragon. Every branch of the occult that has budded in the course of history has its roots in the dragon priests of Cain, who worshipped Lucifer and were initiated into the secrets of the Watchers. Conversely, the mysteries of the Gospel have their roots in Enoch, who walked with God and was initiated in the revelation of Christ, of whom it was prophesied, shall be a staff to the righteous, whereupon to stay themselves and not fall, and he shall be the light of the Gentiles and the hope of those who are troubled of heart. For in his name they are saved. Since the day Enoch penned these words, all those who have heard and believed the, the gospel of Christ, the Son of Man, who redeems the offspring of Adam and reconciles them to God, are initiated into the most wondrous mystery of all, far surpassing anything the watchers imparted to the sons of Cain. It is for this reason that Enoch is called the scribe of righteousness by the angels who instructed him. If Enoch was the scribe of righteousness, then the sons of Cain were the scribes of lawlessness. So this book goes uh, into like his own stories and um, testimony that he has witnessed uh, around the world and what he has seen. Um, it's, to me, it's a great book. Um, do you have to read it? Like I said before, you don't, re you don't really have to read it, but... I like knowing um, more to the story, more puzzle pieces uh, kind of clicked for me when I read this book, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, that's my recommendation for this week. God bless.